this movie is about hacking. What sort of a hack is is this particular in this particular movie? How would you describe it to us? Um, pretty cataclysmic, I suppose. Uh, I mean, the the hack uh, that you see on screen in the early part of the movie is based on Stuxnet, which is a I guess you know a virus that that destroyed nuclear enrichment facilities in um, Iran by causing the centrifuges to speed up and then slow down. Uh, so that's something that that's I guess fairly new in the world of hacking. Be, you know, in the sense that a network is connected to and controls physical devices. And what's really great about the movie is it really it depicts a number of hacks. I mean, it, it depicts a series of increasingly more devastating attacks. And uh, you know it's it's a great opportunity to be able to see what that world is like. So what are you have denial of service is one type of hack. That's right. The sex sex net is what it's very it's, it's real malware. I mean it's all malware, right? I mean can can you is there is there like a can you classify them? Is there like yeah, a short it, list? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in terms of this film, uh, I mean the the Stuxnet type attack is, is very complex, multi level. You know, it has to first get inside the network in the facility and then it has to bounce around in that network until it finds computers that are actually attached to physical device controllers like centrifuges. Um, uh, so that's I think on the far edge in terms of compl complexity and destructive potential. You know, and then you know, more on the other side of the spectrum are things like phishing attacks, you know, when someone cons you into clicking on a PDF or something like that. What was the Sony attack? What was that? Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we really know at this point. I mean, it's it's has yet to be determined. What could it be? Yeah. It really could have been any of those things. I mean, it could have involved malware. It could have involved in some combination of those things a staged attack that involved a lot lots of those techniques. Yeah, I mean, certainly in, to the you know extent that they destroyed hard drives, right? They're affecting the physical world. Um, how they got in initially, I don't know, but there's a pretty good chance it involves some kind of breach of confidence. Just statistically, most uh, attacks, successful intrusions on major networks. So um, if I'm sitting in my office and I'm going to network and I have my Mac and all the security passwords I want, how safe or how unsafe am I in terms of uh, my Macintosh? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, uh, it's a complex question, right? Uh, we could ask you about a dozen more questions. Yeah. Who are you working for? Yeah. Where is it? Is the system air gapped? Uh, do you pick up USB keys you find in the parking lot? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, but generally, if if I don't do any of those things, if I'm just minding my own business, am I pretty safe? Maybe a better question would be, how valuable is the information on your computer? So take it off the network. <laughs> I mean, well, I think yeah, it, I mean, in individuals generally not at yeah, high, high like risk. In your, in your normal everyday life, um, how safe are you? You're, you're safe to the extent to which you are interacting with other systems. I mean, if you're going out in the world and you're going on lots of different websites and you're clicking on a lot of different links and you're a heavy user of the internet and you click on everything that, that every email that someone sends you and you reply to every email that someone sends you, you are exposing yourself to more risk. As security professionals, we like to talk about risk. You know, and so the idea of safe or dangerous is not really uh, the way we like to talk about things. We like to talk about things in, in terms of the degree of risk. You know, if you do X, you're, you expose yourself to this much risk. And if you do Y, this much risk. And so every person should be making those sort of calculations a little bit in their everyday life of, yeah, I want to see the dancing frog, but if I click on the dancing frog, I'm exposing myself to X, Y, and Z. Maybe I can do without seeing the dancing frog or the cat picture, you know, the 10,000th the cat picture that you've seen on YouTube or whatever it is. There was a great article about you, how you, how you got your uh, GoCupid uh, account to go number one. Yeah. Can you tell us how you did that? Uh, yeah, I, well, I, I had to gather a, a lot of data from people's profiles and questions. Uh, and so I had to convince OkCupid to let me do that. Um, so that involved, uh, you know, a couple weeks of hacking. Um, and then once I had all the information, I used uh, a variety of machine learning tools to essentially figure out the best ways to weight all the different questions. Uh, and, you know, in doing so, made myself the number one, you know, at least male profile in Los Angeles.